Well, we played for you moments ago a small sampling of how Reverend Al Sharpton has spoken in recent months about the cases of Eric Garner and Michael Brown. He has often sounded like a self-appointed judge and jury, not only assuming guilt by police, but also assuming the worst of motives and claiming facts for which there often is no evidence. And this is the man the White House thought would make this situation better. And now, listen to him today. These were New York's finest doing their work, protecting the city, protecting our community. We're mourning their loss, and we are all outraged and saddened by the death of these police officers. Any use of the names of Eric Garner or Michael Brown in conjunction with violence or the killing of police is reprehensible. I and others have called for stopping violence, not perpetuating it. Joining me now, Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark. Sheriff Clark, good to see you again. And, and you know, you, you have difficulty understanding that that's the same man who got up there and said that police basically executed Michael Brown without feeling for any threat to their own lives, uh, which was against the evidence. But that's what he told everybody in Ferguson and the world. And now today, after calling the cops cockroaches, and you've got to turn on the light to flush them out, he, he's all praise for law enforcement. Your thoughts? Phony. That's what he is. Al Sharpton's a cartoon. I don't know why the media continues to put a camera and a microphone in front of his face as if he's some... Uh, because the White uh, House is using him as their point man on race issues. I get that. And I'm not going to engage in hyperbole, but Al Sharpton has created a pathway that has led to the increase in police hatred all across America. He doesn't believe a word of what he said today, neither does anybody else. He does propagate violence, he propagates hate, he's self-serving, and it's about time that America start to turn away from Al Sharpton along with some of these other uh, cop haters that we've heard so much from over the last couple of months. And yet things seem to be going in a different direction for him. As I mentioned, he's a close liaison with the White House. He was their man on the ground in Ferguson and has been talking uh, directly with the president and his top advisors about race in America and the issues we've seen over the past couple of months. In addition, this whole Sony mess where they got hacked, one of the top executives, Amy Pascal, one of the people who's musings about how Barack Obama must love only black films because he happens to be African-American. Uh, she, when she did her mea culpa, who did she go to? Al Sharpton. He's now apparently the man people have to go to in order to you know, offer their, their condolences, their apologies, if they say something racist in this country. Well, he's trying to walk away and distance himself from some of the uh, anti-cop hatred that he's been spewing darn near his whole life, but I'm not going to let him get away with it. Uh, he knows what's going on here. He does this for some nefarious intent, uh, for self-serving purposes. But, uh, you know, you're known by the company you keep. And so when I see him shoulder to shoulder with people like Mayor de Blasio, when I see him with Eric Holder, and I see him in the company of the President of the United States, that tells me a lot because I would question the judgment of anybody in the United States of America that would hold counsel or take advice from Al Sharpton. And yet what we're told is that in a lot of these situations, what he claims is that uh, you've got the police, the police union, sometimes the city, behind the cops on the one side. And then you have a family like the Garner family or the Brown family that has nobody on their side. This is, how, this is what he says. So he sweeps in and helps them organize, get a <laughs> lawyer, and offer their side of the story. They don't need Al Sharpton on their side. What I would, my, my advice to the, the, the Garner family, to the uh, Brown family and anybody else, if you see Al Sharpton coming in your direction, you hear he's coming to your town, run as fast and as far as you can from that individual because he's only here to squeeze as much juice out of you as he can for his own self-serving purposes. And then he leaves. He hasn't been anywhere around Ferguson, Missouri. They're trying to pick up the pieces that are shattered lives there and help, uh, help rebuild. And he's not going to be around the Eric Garner family long either. He's going to be on to the next self-serving mission that Al Sharpton is known for. I find it to be sick. I find it to be despicable. And I'm going to continue to uh, really raise Kane on the, the mainstream media, not Fox News Channel, but the mainstream media to continue to look to him as a go-to guy 
on the feelings uh, 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 and the thoughts of black America. Well, you know, we have, we have a report directly on point, directly on point, coming up right after this break. So I've got 45 seconds to a hard break. Quickly, sir, your thoughts on the lost officers tonight. Two of New York's finest gone, and any time that a law enforcement officer is killed in the United States, we take that personally, and we feel that a little bit of us has died as well. God bless NYPD and the families of those slain officers. Sheriff Clark, good to see you, sir. Thank you.